that you made systems and yeah. it's not a big in my ears the whole system <laughs> thing he's going to break it give us a breakdown so yeah. we can understand so as we wrap up this morning remember we are live on facebook you can join in the conversation. Be sure to share the link. Mm -hmm. All right. You can also send in if you have any question, you want to join in the conversation with a comment, whether it's uh, with a WhatsApp or you want to, you can drop it below the live feed. You can also send your question or comments via WhatsApp. The number to send it to is zero is zero five zero zero five four zero one three zero six eight four that is zero five four zero one three zero six eight four you're listening to the i'm drive sunny 88.7 fm mr michael hinef is the co-founder of lead a freak international michael you're welcome thank you good to see you again yes so we wrap up today Mm, so sad <laughs> <laughs> but maybe just because we're wrapping up today i'll just let you touch on a little bit of how we started a little mm. of yesterday and then let's get on to we have to share with us today um if you are hearing me good morning and uh, happy new year so we we'll spent the last three days trying to treat the subject of goal setting how do we properly set our goals for the year so that we can achieve the success that all of us have been dreaming and praying for and um, my system is very simple so we started with looking at the larger outcomes of your life what you do every day is going to lead you towards the attainment of how you want your life to be and so there are key questions that you want to ask yourself what do i want out of life what is important to me how do i want the world to remember me when i'm no more that's outcome so determine the outcome and then we did a review of your previous year so in this case we are looking at 2022 and I suggested that don't start a year without reviewing the previous one. Don't, don't do that. Otherwise, then you repeat the same mistakes. You recycle the same stresses and the same mistakes into the new year. And so my suggestion is buy a little notebook, have a pen or pencil, and then sit somewhere nobody will disturb you. And there are three things you do with the review. One is you do a goal review. So of the things that you prayed for and wanted to do, how did they pan out? Did you achieve them? If you achieved them, what made you achieve them? Ask yourself why. If you didn't achieve them, what didn't help you or support you to achieve them? Ask yourself why. Then you do a relationship review of all the relationships in your life. Which ones are helping you? Which ones are not helping you? So that you can chop off and travel light into the new year. There are some relationships that are not helping you, but you haven't taken the time to sit and to assess and analyze it there's this boy who has been in and out of your life for five years <laughs> sister obey and quiet move on <laughs> but if you don't do the relationship with you you will know that this guy is keeping me away from moving forward in life i mean any time you make serious then he'll come for three months as soon as uh, and then he'll go back again and for five years you keep asking yourself will he will he not will he will he not this is the year you make that decision Call him, give him cook to drink, look into his eyes, and then say your final farewells and move on with your life. So that is the relationship with you. And it's not just that. It could be the reverse. There's a sister who is also not too sure. And my brother, you've been fasting and praying, and this sister is still not saying yes. This is the year to make that decision so you can know exactly what to do. And also with friends and family. There are some family members who are trouble. Uh -huh. And you need to chop them off so that you can move on. Reduce. When I say chop them off, I don't mean kill them. <laughs> but I mean reduce your contact hours with them. with them and their influence and impact in your life. There are some family members when they come into your house, by the time they leave, they have come to clash heads and created tension. And every, uh, yes, and a lot, a lot of the time we allow them to do it. This year, block them from your life so that you can what, move forward. And it will also be business relationships. There are some business relationships that are not helping you. So you do a complete relationship review of your life so far. And then that helps you to have a focus on 2023. And then finally, you do a calendar review. So of the activities that you did, if you have a diary that you've been keeping track of what you do, look, take that diary and look back and say, what did I do that did not help me to achieve my uh, goals for the year? 
what is it that I engaged in that was not helpful? So this year, you chop off all those ones. So that's how you do the review. There's a more systematic one I use, or other coaches use, it's very popular, which is the Wheel of Life. And that allows you to do a 360 degree assessment of your satisfaction with your life based on 10 life domains. Um, you can uh, nip one uh, at our e-learning site, www.myleadershipfarm.com. Uh, you will get a copy of the Wheel of Life or request for a copy, and then you can use that. Or just go on Google, type the Wheel of Life. You will get some free copies. Use that to assess your life on the 10 life domains. Other coaches use eight. Others use seven. We are Lead Africa. We use 10. We've added two additional domains. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you do your review. And so you've done the review. Now you are ready to set goals for the year. Okay. And so you now have... What, what are my priorities to start the goal setting process? What are my priorities for this year? What do I want to focus on? Because there's limited resources, I have limited time, and I may have limited capacity. So based on this, what is my priority for 2023? Decide on that. It doesn't mean you don't do anything. You do some things, but these are topmost priority. They receive pride of place as far as your life is concerned. So you decide, and I say, don't make it too much. Focus on about maximum three or four, or five at the max. Priority. That's why they are priorities. And if there's anything you want to do this year, focus on less. Uh -huh. Some of us, we are doing too many things. And that's how come we are stressed out most of the time. It's impacting our health. Uh, our monies are being spread too thin because you are taking care of so many people that you don't have the capacity to take care of. And so have a priority for 2023. It is only when you have done this that you are ready to set the goal. Okay. <laughs> and the goal itself has four steps. So yesterday we talked about it. One is purpose. What is the purpose of each goal? Give yourself a why. Give yourself a reason to. Once you can give yourself a reason to, you'll be amazed at how you can elicit your mind to help you to achieve the goal. And in, in some way, you read about David when he went to the war front, when his, ma his father had asked him to go and give Gary and water to his brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> they say, take some shit and Gary to your brothers because they are fighting. This war was in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the Afram place somewhere. <laughs> you know, so David goes and uh, he's, he sees some giant beast standing somewhere making blah, blah, blah. And he's inquiring, what's going on? And they say, look, this guy has been troubling us for the last couple of months. Every day when we come, we fight. But this time he says, no, we are not fighting as a nation. We should just elect one man to come and face us. And, and they say, so what's going to happen? They say, well, the king has promised that one, if you are able to conquer this man, he will give you his daughter in marriage. Your family, he will give you, I think, 30 pieces of silver or something. And then your family will no longer pay taxes. So three reasons why somebody should face this giant. And then he went to his senior brother and said, I want to fight this guy. And the guy said, my friend, get away. <laughs> what do you know about fighting? This giant, he has been fighting since he was a youth. And you, you are a youth. And David asked him a very important question. He says, is there not a cause? So basically what David was saying is that, don't I have a reason to act? I mean, you guys, you say you are commandos, captains, and lieutenant colonels, and all of that. But this guy has been blah, blah, blah for the last one month or so, and nobody has faced him. Don't I have a reason to at least even give it a try? So David gave himself a purpose. And because of that, he was able to launch an attack on Goliath and defeat him. And so what we want to do with our lives is that for each of your goals, what's your purpose? Give yourself a motivation. And then now you look at the envisioned future of the goal, which is, when you have completed the goal, how will it look like? So write it as if you have already achieved it. You are calling it into being. After the envision future, you now look at the current situation. Currently, with that particular goal, what is the state of it? What do you have? Where are you starting from? And then finally, you come to the action steps or the specific commitments. So this is the actions you are going to take to be able to achieve each of the goals you've set for yourself for this year. So that's the system so far. Okay. Oh, that's the framework so far. All right. And so now today is, is about the goal achievement Good. system. What, what is a goal achievement system? Um, 
I, by the grace of God, I train a lot. I speak a lot. And uh, anytime you talk, people are like, let's get real. You know, Ghana is hard. Uh, within the constraints of the economy, how do you think we can do what you are talking about? This thing, the American things. These are foreign. <laughs> I said, no, they are not foreign things. Now, the challenge is that, okay, now we are teaching people to set goals. But life is not a straight road. Mm -hmm. There are curves, there are bends, there are detours. And, and sometimes things hit us. And so the challenge with most people is that at the sight of one problem, they give up. And they, some, it takes them years to be able to pick it up again. And so then you need a certain system to help you to continue to focus on the goal. No matter what happens to no the economy. No matter what happens to the economy. You see, the economy is external. You have the power internally to do what you want to do within the economy. In this economy, you, you'll be amazed. People are making the, 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 their highest income. Yeah. Within what we are saying is a broken system. Yeah. People are making the highest income. So it's all about mindset. It's all about how we frame what we are seeing. People see problems and say, ah, there's an opportunity. I must create a service or a product for it. Others see problems and say, hey, Nankupon, why did you do that? I'm going home. Everything is in shambles. Mm. And so, yes, things will come at you. Disappointments will come. But how do you keep at it? What is that system that will help you to continue to focus on it? Not All right, getting to the system that will help us focus on achieving our goals no matter what happens. Because, I mean, I mean who, who thought COVID was coming and COVID exactly. came? Who knows what is coming in 20 exactly. But despite it, what can we put in place so we can still sail through these times? Remember, this is um, the Start Right series with Mr. Michael Ogeniefa. It's about how to set our 2023 goals. We are live on Facebook. Be sure to join in the discussion. Please share the link with others also. You can send in if you have any questions as you're speaking with us. If you have a comment, you can send to 0540-130684. That is 0540-130684. Back to you. Stefan. Good. Now, the reason why we don't focus on our goals or miss it is two things. One is attention. The second one is energy. And so the goals are not the problem. The economy is not the problem. It's because we starve our goals of attention and energy. And so our goals leave our frame of mind. We throw it somewhere. Ah, this thing cry. Let's assume you want to start a business. Some suppliers have promised you they'll give you supplies. One person disappoints you, the second is addicted, and then you give up. Ah, Ghana, that's how people are. Yeah. But if only try three people, and you say, Ghana, there are 30 million people in Ghana. And so it's attention and energy that deprives us of the achievement of our goals, not the goals themselves, not challenges, not problems. And so if you want to do anything this year, if you want to achieve your goals, and remember this too, always give your goals attention and always give them energy. That is the only thing. Lack of these two is what will prevent you from achieving your goals, not the economy, not the president, not ministers, not anybody. Because in this same economy, Chinese people are coming in droves here and making more money than they can ever make in 100 years in China. So it is not because we have a problem. It is because of our mindset. So how then do you give that attention and energy? Now, you use a phone, right? Yes, I do. Very good. And every morning you charge the phone. I so you do. give it energy. Yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. Good. And then you start using it. And as you start using it, the energy depletes. And I charge it again. Good. What do you do? Charge it again. So the problem is not the fact that the phone's battery has gone down. The problem, if you can't use it because you are not charging it. That's what I mean by attention and energy. So just as we don't throw our mobile phones away when their energy depletes, so should you not throw your goal away simply because two or three people have disappointed you. But could you at a point maybe revise that goal, something not exactly yes. throw it away, but yes. maybe change a few things about Very it good. because of... Very good. So okay. make modifications. Okay. Change your plan. Change the... So the strategy remains the same, but the operational plan must change. Okay. Okay. Maybe you wanted to start your that business in Tudu or Kaishi. You go there, realize oh, there are too many people there. Why don't you go to the Spinters Road? Okay. Why don't you go to Yarifa? It's a new developing area. So the problem. You can go to Danfa. <laughs> <Or> go... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So you don't go home crying, you know, that, hey, now that this, the business. No. Look for a new territory and go and conquer that new territory. So yes, make money. Maybe even go out of Accra, go to Techima. Uh -huh. Or instead of product A, you move to product B because product A seems to be too saturated on the market. So that's why we are saying it is all about attention and energy. F continue to focus on it. The setbacks will come, the challenges will come. But if you are at it, you will not give up. You will achieve the goal. So how do you do that? Now I learned something from a man called Michael Hyatt and he has a three-part system for achieving our goals. So he says that, look, break your goals down into three parts. Every quarter, what do you want to do with it? Every quarter. Every quarter. He calls it the quarterly big three. So every quarter, focus on three things that you must absolutely do, no matter what, every three months. Quarterly big three. So you have a larger goal of putting up your building. But within three months, what can you do? Three things. So focus on just that. Don't, don't look at the entire building. In the three months, I'll buy a trip of sand. I'll buy uh, 50 bags of cement. I'll make sure that at least three coats war is done. That's all I want to do in three months. That's all. Focus on that. And realize that the more you do the three, the three, the three, it keeps you towards the realization and the attainment of the goal. So break the goal down into quarters and focus on three things you must do in that quarter. Then having done the quarter, do a weekly big three. Every week, focus on three top things you must do towards the achievement of your goals every week. And I suggest that you do uh, it on the day you were born. Why? <laughs> it has spiritual significance. I won't go into that today. <laughs> but it has spiritual significance. If you can do that. So on the day you were born, choose either a morning, lunchtime, afternoon, maybe use your lunch, you go and sit somewhere, order a cup of coffee, take your notebook, and three things. In seven days, what do I want to do towards my goal? Sometimes as little as making a phone call. Sometimes as little difference. as, yes, makes all the, sometimes as little as driving to some place to have that conversation you've put off for six months. So three, just three, that this week, no matter what happens, I'll do this three. Weekly, big three. Okay. And then finally, daily, big three. Finally, daily, daily big, big three. three. So every day, when you wake up, don't walk out of your room without a clear plan of what you want to do for the day. Command your day. And you do that by agreeing that before I sleep, I should have done three things. Just three. And once again, it's very simple, simple things that you want to do. Go and ask of the price of that item you want to import. Check out on Alibaba or some other site how these prices are in charge. That's all you need to do. Three, just three things every day. And pray over them. Pray over them for the day. Okay. And so what you do is that you are putting your goals in the front burner of your life. You are giving your goals energy and attention so that, um, you know, the parable of the sower. When you sow, definitely some will fall in tons mm -hmm. and some things will prevent it from growing. And so, yes, you can step out and immediately there's a WhatsApp message or a phone call and it changes your day. It does. But if you have it written that this is the three things I must achieve by the, before I sleep tonight, even when you come home at 7 p.m., you so pick you them up back and do them. So, and if you keep doing it every day, every week, every quarter, you realize that you are giving your goals attention. Okay. And your money, your efforts and resources are going into the realization of your goals and dreams and not other people. Because otherwise, other people's priorities will bracket you. <laughs> and you keep on facing and doing for other people, whereas you are starving yourself. By the end energy. of the year, you start getting bitter. <laughs> <laughs> you start getting bitter. You, and then, oh, and I'm in quite a sign about me. You know, uh, my God, that maybe my, and, and, and people are just giving up, but they, it is not the world, it is you. And so this year, if anybody will change, it is you. It's not the economy, it's not the politicians, it is you. And if you can change, you can change your mindset, you can change your attitude, your approach to things, 
as I keep saying, you'll be amazed at what you will do before even June. Before even June. June. Yeah. And and my other advice is that when the year starts, attack the year giddy 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 giddy. Douglas, what's the year. English <laughs> word for that? <laughs> Our producer in the studio with us. English word for attack. <laughs> with all alacrity and seriousness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in three months, you should. I was having a conversation with a businessman. He said that by June, we have achieved our year's target. Wow. He said, I like to do what I must do at the very beginning of the year. I don't want to do passe passe because you don't know what will happen. In 2020, we all started the year. We had gone for 31st night. We we're all full of them. Yes. By February, mid-February, the world had changed. You know, so when the year starts, don't do per se, per, you don't have time. We all don't know when the rapture will happen. So attack the year with so alacrity. Strong. Focus on the goals, try and get them out. You'll be amazed by June, you, are, you have made so much progress mm -hmm. and the rest is bonus. Mm -hmm. You just begin to chill, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that is how you give your goals focus, attention and energy. And that will help you to make sure that the goals that you've set for yourself are being achieved. It makes you happier. It makes you more fulfilled. If you don't do these things, then you continue to blame the gods of your hometown. And the politicians. I'm sure the politicians are happy <laughs> to hear you today because they've been blamed a lot. Yes, I want to shift the blame away from them. <laughs> it's time to take responsibility. The I Drive yeah. right here on Sunny 88.7 FM and it's the goal achievement systems we're discussing with Mr. Michael Ohinia. For any more to share on that with us? Yeah. And then the other thing we need to do if you want to achieve your goals, two things. One, every year, renew your mindset. Exactly. Enter every year with a new mindset. The challenge is that most people enter the year with the old mindset. We haven't sat down to say, what, what do I want to get out of this year? What is my mindset? How am I tackling things? How am I approaching things? So every year, wear a new mindset. Because if you don't wear a new mindset, it's like you bought new computer hardware. But the operating system is still the same. So it's slowing the new hardware down. Mr. Michael, but Mr. F, what you've done things the same way for a very long time. Yeah. How, how, how can you adapt to, you know, re resetting this mind, you know, to tackle things differently? It, it can be tough sometimes. Yeah. It, it's, it's how our brain has been configured. It's configured to keep us the comfort. Because the brain doesn't like too much work. It takes it too much processing time to allow you to do a new thing. So that's how we are. That is how come a lot of people <clears throat> are average. Because all of us like the, the familiar, the comfort, the, what we are used to. And so sometimes we know that these things are not helping us. But the will to do the new thing is just not there. It's, it's part of us as human beings. And so what you need to do is to begin to change the outputs. Begin to change the pictures you see. Because then it begins to give you a new mindset. Okay. Because you see, when you grow up in Kotobabi down, which is where I grew up, <laughs> and you see the same building, same friends, same, you know, everything else, you think, well, you are doing well. But when you go to Trasaku, mm. you realize that, hey, at the end of the side, no difference will move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So until you go to Trasaku, you will not realize that, hey, some buildings can be built this way. Hey, even the architecture, the feeling is different. So if you don't change the output, you know, you keep on having the same conversations, same friends, you watch the same television stations, same programs, you will think the same way. And so what you need to do is to begin to change the picture. Begin to change what you read. Begin to change what you see. You can't change your life by watching telenovelas three hours every day. You are wasting one eighth of the time God gave you. So you are spending basically about one and a half months every year watching TV. And then you spend another one third, four months uh, sleeping, which is eight hours every day. So we spend actually three months of you know, every year sleeping. Stefa comes up with this statistics. <laughs> I see how bad these things can, can be in our lives. <laughs> a a month mean, and a half watching yes, TV novella. Yeah, no, four months watching TV, uh, sleeping. So if you are 30 years, you spend 10 years sleeping. Mm -hmm. 
So you've only had 20 years of productive time. And even that one, too, you are doing passe passe with it. So you are not going to change your life if you don't change some of these elements mm -hmm. and you continue to blame everybody else but yourself. So change your pictures, change what you are seeing, change how you talk to yourself, change your mindset. Tell yourself that this is what I want to do. And once you have that mindset, yes, the setbacks will come, the challenges will come, but you continue at it, you persist at it, and then you will win. Mm -hmm. And so every year, enter the year with a new mindset. Okay. And then the last thing you want to do is to change four things. Is to change four things. Now, you see, you are where you are today because five years ago, you did four things. You took some decisions, you made some choices, you engaged in some habits, and you engaged in some actions. At the end of the day, our life boils down to these four things. Decisions, choices, habits, and actions. The same way you will be somewhere else in five years' time based on these four. So this year, if you want to achieve your goals, change these four. Please go over those four again. Decisions. All decisions. Choices. Choices. Habits. Our habits. Actions. Habits and our actions. Yeah. You know, somebody said we are what we repeatedly do. So the actions you take every day, the habits that you engage in, the choices that you have made with your life and your money and everything else, and the decisions that you are making is what is going to get you up there. Is what to help you to achieve your life dreams and goals. Uh, for the first time in my life, I'm here about goal achievement system. And maybe for some of you two could be uh, your first. And I'm excited about this part because a few times I felt I started the year with a lot of them, a lot of action, you know. I'm achieving my goal in midway. I'm like, Jennifer, what's happening to you? So uh, this year, I'm looking at following these principles you've shared. Uh, so along the way, because try, we, we could get hit, I mean. <laughs> so we might as well know how to cross the bridge. That's so when right. the bridge when comes, comes, we yeah. quickly uh, cross it the way we know best to cross it. And I uh, just want to mention also that we're live on Facebook. You can join in the conversation. Be sure to share the link with others. If you have a question, you can send it through. I see uh, Daniel, Daniel Saki. I see you on our screen. Thank you for joining us this morning. He says, great show. Guatima Aka says, very insightful. Well, I'm excited to let you know that if you've been following our time with uh, Mr. Mike Loheni, a co-founder of Lead a Freak, he is going to, we are so blessed to have him being a part of the Start Right Conference. And I know some of you also followed him during our Raising Boy series. And uh, I want him to just touch a little bit on what he will be tackling um, at the Start Right Conference and why it's important that we all gather there and be a part of the Start Right Conference. So um, I'll be tackling uh, parenting and uh, vision board. Mm -hmm. It's important, as we've been saying, that how you set the tone for the year will determine everything else that will follow. And so in this one month, you are going to hear a number of messages, a number of insights, ideas, and strategies for shaping your life. Now, somebody said that a mind once open never closes. And you will never change your life until your mind comes into contact with explosive information. The mind is a powerful tool. <laughs> yes. And so what uh, this is about is that on the 28th, you will come across explosive information with people who have done it uh, and are doing it. And what if you can just pick one idea, one strategy from these people, and you intend that, okay, the 11 months of the year, I'm going to implement this using what we have just talked about. Every day, I'll do just three little things. Every week, I'll do three micro, uh, micro things. Then every quarter, I'll focus on my big stuff. If you can do this, we will collectively change our lives in 2023. Mm. And so that is what Vision Board will touch a little bit about it. But we will create pictures of your goals, of your dreams and aspirations. Mm -hmm. And as you see it every day, it will never leave you. Uh, and, and the Bible says that though the vision tarries, it will surely what come to pass. And so once you can have this vision board, place it where you see it every day, you are begin to draw yourself towards this attainment. Now, how do you do that? And why should you do it? 
that's what we're looking at. That's and and with parenting, which is my, my, my big passion in life. I can, I, <laughs> the first time I met Mr. Hinefa, I said, this man is, is up for this. Yes. He's uh, up for this. You have two children, right? Yes, I do. Two teens. Two teens. Uh, yes, uh, who are now sharing my shoes. <laughs> They haven't gone into sharing your shirt yet. No, that one too. When it's a bit small, no, they say, ah, that it still looks like it's, uh, it's small on you. And then I say, so? Is it so? So what? <laughs> so, so sharing is scary. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I have two things, lovely ones. Awesome. And um, I've been, myself and Tisha have been doing this for the last nine years in March, just doing parenting full-time, working with children full-time. And so we have a program that allows us to work with children on leadership and soft skills in schools. And so we get to interact with about a thousand or two thousand children every year. And so we've picked up a lot and I have a constant engagement with teens. This Christmas, one of the things I did was I invited my entire, my sons and uh, my children's, uh, my son and daughter's entire class to the house and we barbecued. Yes, they came home, we barbecued, we drank and were asking questions. I was talking to them, I was observing behavior you know, we're fooling around the place, uh, just uh, chilling, having our own good time. Mm -hmm. And I, we do these things to get to know children, to get to know their hopes and fears, to get to know. And for me as a parent, it allows me to know who my children are Hanging interacting with. with. And so they came, they took over the kitchen, they took over everywhere, but it's good for us. So mm -hmm. it has given us a lot of insight into children. I'll be sharing a few things in terms of how do we get it right? Uh, I keep saying this on my platforms, that when I was growing up, there was only one TV station. And even then, they came at 5.30 mm. and logged off at 11. <laughs> Today, if you, you have, have two dishes, you flip. have access to over 800 channels and internet 24-7. And so if we are not deliberate with our parenting, we'll lose our children. And we'll build all the big businesses and hand it over to children who can manage it. And so parenting has become more crucial than, than, than at this time than ever. The influences on our children, the contamination is just too much and we have to be a bit more activist as parents. And so how do you do that? How do you understand children? And how do you relate to them to achieve a peaceful, calmer home? That's what I'll be touching wow. on. I'm, I'm looking forward to this session with uh, Mr. Hinefa. That's on Saturday, 28th, uh, because uh, right now I'm looking at my son and daughter. I'm like, hey, this, when they are teens, how am I going to do it? So I'm excited that he has teens now. <laughs> and I can gather insights ahead of time before right. my Koju and Anaya become teens as well. And for you okay. parents out there, so that's 28th of January at Alisa Hotel. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be touching on purposeful parenting. You don't want to miss out. It's only 200 Ghanasties. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're listening to the kind of speakers we are blessed to have on this program is a really small investment for us to make to equip ourselves in various areas some of you are probably even looking at okay i want to get some some housing you know i want to put up a home or a house this year i'm looking about at getting a car i'm looking at how i can be healthier than i was last year we have so many goals we're going to be touching on all these and more and some of you also probably are hearing about a vision board he mentioned for the first time i was telling someone yesterday i i found out about vision board when i was after past 30. Now imagine your child, I mean, to find right. that his children had, had their vision boards. Yeah. I'm like, had I known about vision board when I was a teenager and adolescent, yeah. I'm sure uh, my life would have been in a, a probably, who knows, another direction, maybe yeah. better than this. Yeah. So it's a good opportunity to join us. It's going to be practical. He's going to show us we're going to be doing it ourselves. So for anybody who's coming, you will go home with your vision board to, to be looking at every day as we're looking at renewing our minds for 2023. And Dora says... Um, Great uh, conversation. Thank you, Uncle Mike. Looks like you've just joined our Uncle family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us this morning. At the Spin the I'm Drive, Sunny 88.7 FM. Mr. Hoynefa, thank you so much Thank for you. your time. So we're Thank catching you. up with you again. That's on the 28th. Can I say something? Just Please just a do. minute. Do, do I do. have permission you to? You have a minute. All right. Now, <laughs> you know that the eagle is uh, one of the birds that lives the longest. Now, the eagle can live up to 70 years. But when it is 40 years, it begins to get weak. So its feathers can no longer support the way it's meant or created to be. And uh, its talons are weak, uh, the beak, and then its um, hands, 
you know, are, are weak. So it can no longer grip things. And, and for the eagle, that is how it survives. It must be able to poach. It must be able to do stuff. Now, at 40 years, the eagle has a decision to make. Now, should I die because, I mean, I've reached the end of my life. I've done a lot of stuff. Or I can renew myself. And so the eagle decides that it will renew itself. And so what it does is it flies to the highest mountain, the very highest, that nobody, no bird, can reach it. And then it proceeds to take off its talons, its beak, and its feathers. It will hit the talon against a rock until it comes off. And then it will do the same to the feathers. And so it is featherless, talonless, beakless, everything. It's very vulnerable. But then it's at the highest rock, and so no other bird can pounce on it. And it stays in this state for six months until it regrows all these things. And when it has done that, it can now restart life again. And when it has renewed itself, it can then live to another 30 years. Wow. So the choice facing all of us this year you can decide that, yeah, government has beaten me, Ghana has beaten me, inflation, this, in the, that, 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 and give up at 40 years. Or you can take some drastic measures, renew yourself, and get another 30 years. And so this year, the choice is yours. I said life is about decisions and choices. And when you have made these choices, you must form a habit and then engage in the action. The eagle gives us a good example of that. What decisions will you make? What choices are you going to make? And what actions do you want to take so that this year will be your best year yet? Your happiest, your most successful, and your wealthiest year. It is out there for all of us, but you must make the decision. What will it be? I know I want the extra 30. <laughs> I want the extra 30. I don't know about you. I have a message that says, what's the venue and time for the conference? How do I register? So it's happening at Alisa Hotel. It's on the 28th of January. It's 8.30 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, to register, you can call Sika on 0243-577-192. We have packages for, for churches, for groups, organizations that want to come in. If you're a group of friends, you can call and let Sika. You know, I'm coming with 10 of my friends. You've got to give us a discount. Right. We can work something out for you because we all want to be equipped. I and mean, we don't want this alone for ourselves. Let's do this together and get the extra 30, that ego's extra 30. Stay with us right here. Oh, we have a message here. Okay. Uh, this one says, please, Mr. Ohene, how often do we need to review our yearly goals to know if we should continue or change it? I think you addressed it along the way, but I'll yeah. give you a little time mm. to touch on it for the sake of <laughs> this person. We have missed it. Yes. Yeah. So anytime the external environment changes, you must review the goal. So we gave the example. You wanted to do something at Tudu, but you go to Tudu, you do your scan and market survey, you realize that no, you can't. So at that point, the standard has changed. So you need to what? Change. And then also you can change it at your weekly uh, meetings with yourself. Uh, because you've scanned the environment, you've looked at every other thing, you've looked at money available, you've looked at every other contingency and say, okay, I'll change. So you can do this every day, you can do it every week, you can also do it as when there's a shift. Okay, yeah. all right. And uh, is it Paulus? Paulus is a fantastic show by all standards. And uh, Frank says, I'm blessed with the word, may the Lord bless him. Amen. All right, and I think there was one more on WhatsApp, if I can see. Okay, this one says, I'm blessed with the program. Amen. All right, as the Start Rice series this month, we are bringing in more experts. So there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to gather on Sunny FM. So keep your dialogue on radio. Call your friends and family to also listen to Sunny 88.7 FM. Thank you for joining us this morning on uh, our Start Right series with Mr. Michael Hinia. I'll be back to say bye-bye. Uh, a great start will give you an edge in your quest to achieve success, while a terrible start will ensure a year that falls short of expectations. How can you equip yourself and set the right tone?